Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt and this is my wife Samantha. Hello! And today we are watching Scarface. What do you know about this movie? This won our Al Pacino Patreon poll. Yes. So we would like to thank all our patrons for voting for this to win our Al Pacino poll. It won it by quite a lot, I think. So we'll definitely be doing another Al Pacino poll. We've seen him a handful of times, amazing all of the time, but today it's Scarface and I may know like one catchphrase. Say hello to my little friend. Okay. Have you heard that before? I have heard okay. that. Didn't know that was from this film. Um, I knew that it was an Al Pacino quote, but yeah, I don't entirely know what the film's about. I want to say that maybe it's like revenge. I don't know. Could be. I just know that the cover is Al Pacino, I think with like a giant gun. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I'm assuming this is going to be brutal, like most Al Pacino films that we've seen have been. I think this is also the same director as The Untouchables, which we saw on the channel not too long ago. Okay. And today's video is brought to you by Shaker and Spoon. Here's the box that we were sent. Um, it comes with everything minus the alcohol. Each box allows us to try three different recipes centered around one type of alcohol. We've tried to make a drink before for a video, The Big Lebowski. We made White Russians. They were not great. <laughs> no. They were okay, but we don't know how to make drinks. But now with Shaker and Spoon, we actually know how to make a drink just by following their easy instructions. This is a great way for us to experience new drinks, learn about the drink making process. And we love hosting as well as having a little drink with movie night. The Shaker and Spoon subscription gives us the opportunity to try a bunch of different drinks. It can do a single drink, a couple of drinks for us, or it can do up to 12 drinks for a small get together. Spiced mojo syrup. Whoa, okay. Mojo? Moho? <laughs> Smo mojo? Moho mojo syrup. <laughs> So that's another cool thing is that a lot of this stuff, it's all provided by Shaker and Spoon and seems pretty rare, pretty unique ingredients. Bim error. <laughs> <laughs> cinnamon Demarer syrup. We'll just go with cinnamon syrup. So it looks like it came with four different types of drinks. We have the Feather Billet, the Beat Goes On, the Tijuana Brass, or the, never mind, Glossary. <laughs> So it looks like it comes with three drinks. Coconut water. <laughs> and some chocolate mole. Bitter. Whoa, okay. Chocolate's right up your alley. So we decided to go with the beat goes on. Yeah. What's easy about these recipes is they are literally a single serving. So we're gonna double everything because we're gonna have the same drink. Woo! What drink are we making? The beat goes on, man. Pour this through the strainer into our glasses for us to enjoy. Okay. One to two spritzes of spiced lemon oil. Get that aroma to Scarface and Shaker and Spoon. Cheers. Oh, wow. That is so good. Taste all of the spices. I've never had Anejo tequila before, so that's mm -hmm. new. Yeah, a good amount of sweet. I can definitely taste the spice of the bitters. We also have like the lemon oil. It's so cohesive, but you can taste each of the individual ingredients. I've never put alcohol up to my nose and be like, ooh, that smells good. <laughs> but Doesn't this, just smell like tequila. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it smells more than tequila. It actually yeah. smells very pleasant. Yeah. I love the like little spray of lemon at the end. I feel like that just makes all the difference. And this was really easy to make. I mean, it took us a few minutes. Yeah. I mean, that was the first time we've ever made any sort of cocktail. That was the first time we've ever used any of those type of cocktail tools mm -hmm. or whatever. The really cool thing is the shaker and spoon came with a glossary for terminology and descriptions. So when it says to use a shaker, to use a dash and not a drop, you're like, well, what the heck's a dash? And you look at the very clear glossary and it tells you exactly what it is. So super easy to follow, great drinks. It's way different than just having a shot of tequila and throwing that back. <laughs> uh, this is something that you can actually make and enjoy. And especially for this long movie, to sip on this throughout the movie, this is gonna be awesome. Yeah, even though this is so good, I 
just, just, wanna, just, just want to finish it now. Just chug it now. So. <laughs> Before the film. But this is delicious. This was a lot of fun for us to make together. Absolutely. Um, and I'm excited. You'll probably see us enjoying some more cocktails maybe throughout um, other videos since we have other recipes to try. Yeah. It adds a whole new layer to movie night. Something that we've tried before with the White Russians. Now this is a whole new level. Yeah. This is an actual professional drink <laughs> made by totally amateur bartenders. Yeah. Soon to be professional. <laughs> so I'm super excited to watch Scarface. Yeah, me too. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on our Instagram, Twitch, or Twitter, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. Cheers. 25,000 had criminal records. That's interesting. That's also a ton of people. Yeah. Oh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Wow. I don't think we've seen her on the channel yet. I don't think so. Antonio Montana. Antonio Montana. Mother, she bad too. What kind of work you do in Cuba, Tony? Is he one of the criminals? I was in the army. Jay, no way. Been in a mental hospital. The boat coming over. <laughs> <laughs> Marijuana. Never mind. Heroin. No. Circling him. Where'd you get the beauty scar, tough guy? Eating pussy? What the hell? Some kind of code these guys use in a can. Pitchfork means an assassin. I'm Tony Montana, a political prisoner from Cuba. Met with a lot of hostility right away. It's like a whole city over here. Come here. It's way too many people playing basketball. We got a green card and a job in Miami, man. Dang. How do you set that up? Emilio Revenga. Revenga? But while he was on top, he tortured a few guys to death. Jeez. I kill a communist for fun. Ooh. But for a green card, I'm gonna carve him up real nice. Okay. Uh-oh. Jeez. Ooh. Well, there's the guy. This is a perfect time to kill him. Yeah, I feel like this would be so easy in this chaos. Yeah. Ooh, you're done for. Come on. Get him. Ooh, a bunch of people want to kill this guy. You're not making it to that door. Damn, perfect timing. That's nice. <laughs> so happy. And whoever paid him to kill that guy is really hooked up to be able to get those green cards. Yeah, that's a lot of guys. That one right there in the pink. She's beautiful, man. Look at those titties. <laughs> What's he got? I don't know. Money? Five hundred. Who do you think we are? Baggage handlers? Whoa. The going rate on a boat is a thousand a night, man. What's with this dishwasher, Chico? Uh oh. Don't be calling me no fucking dishwasher. I'll kick your fucking monkey right. ass. Oh. There's a bunch of Colombians coming in Friday. They say they got two keys for us. Seems sketchy. Yeah, there's no way. You know how to handle a machine gun. So he's a hothead. Yeah. To worry too much, you know? You're gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> he says Colombians and you make these eyes. I don't like fucking Colombians. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and you took that personally. <laughs> you can't worry all the time. You're gonna have a fucking heart attack. Just play it cool, you know? I feel like he's never played it cool a day in his life. No, he always seems on edge. Money stays in the trunk till I come out. Oh, it's really just like in broad daylight? 15 minutes. Guess so. Something's wrong. 15 minutes. Maybe hide the gun? <laughs> Nervous. I am Hector. I ain't Tony. You got any money? You got any stuff? I got it close by. I mean, <laughs> I guess he does with the money too. Right? They're both playing it so safe. I don't have the money either, man. I have a cross by too. <laughs> in the car. <laughs> Got him. No, not in the car. Man. Just guys. Only focuses with women. Oh. oh. What's the stuff? Yes, Damn. Colombians. <laughs> Why don't you try sticking your head up your ass? Oh man, it's just right there. Oh fuck. What is that? Chainsaw. I 
mean, he said 15 minutes. How close are we to 15 minutes for his backup to come in? They so distracted. Yeah, they're probably hanging out with some ladies. <laughs> Meanwhile, they getting chewed up in here. You don't want this to happen to you? Let me the money, okay? Oh. Oh shit, dude, you are fucking up. Oh. This poor dude. Your friends in pieces. Maybe it'll be so loud that he can get in and start shooting. Oh, Shit. I thought he was just shooting a mirror. Oh. Oh no. Oh. Where's the other guy? Oh my god. Up. Holy crap. He didn't take the suitcase. No, they got the drugs. And the money. And the money. And one less guy to split it with. Oh, he's still going after him though. I mean, this wild man just walking around. Oh, he doesn't have his chainsaw either. <laughs> just gonna execute him here in the street. Oh my god. Just gonna run him over? Did they bring the suitcase down or no? They grabbed just the bags. Oh, okay. You can never trust a Colombian. <laughs> I ain't taking it the road past myself. Now you, me. Wants to take it straight to the boss. I mean, they should give him that after he was able to keep the money and the drugs. Right? This fucking guy. Tony just hates everyone. This definitely looks like a Miami rich place. <laughs> Call me Frank. But call me son of a bitch of me or a bitch. You don't have to mention that. That was fun. That was fun. That was fun. <laughs> I find it fun. Sometimes it's fun. You stay loyal in this business, you're gonna move up. Salam. Salam. Cheers. I call you a horse. Okay, they're gonna cook you a horse. <laughs> Wow, immediate. Not look like it. It's too fucking ugly. Come here. Where the hell you been? I'm starving. You should try, Star. <laughs> I thought we go to the Babylon Club. Again. If anyone ever wanted to assassinate you, you wouldn't be too hard to find. <laughs> Who the hell would want to kill me? <laughs> so uh, Tony's a little too interested in his boss's girl. I mean, I feel like they're set. They did such a good job. Oh, yeah, he wants them around him all the mm -hmm. time, which means he's going to be around her all the time. <laughs> She's so annoyed. Yeah, she hates this conversation. Don't underestimate the other guy's greed. Don't get high on your own supplies. Not everybody follows the rules, huh? Oh. So I want you to work for me. I want you and your boys to... This guy's real close. <laughs> so you want to dance? You want me to dance? Yeah. What? He got the boss's approval to go dance? As long as he's just dancing. I think he's a fucking peasant. <laughs> it breaks his back for you. So, doesn't really view him too highly. Just someone who's willing to do anything he wants. I mean, he came off just sounding crazy right off the bat when he said it was fun. <laughs> I'm a political refugee, so take it easy. Look in your eye like you haven't been fucked in a year. I'm not your baby. Not yet, man. Just straight to it. Desperate, starved, and begging for it. You'd be the last thing I'd ever fuck. <laughs> it went pretty well. She liked me. The eyes, Chico, they never lie. You're gonna get us a kill fuck already. You, man. That guy's soft. Damn. Don't fucking go crazy on me, okay? Seriously. I say be happy with what you got. You'll be happy. He just wants everything. Oh, well, what's coming to you, Tony? The world, Chico. And everything in it. He has no boundaries whatsoever. I mean, everything he's done, he's really kind of been rewarded for, so... It's sounds like a great big pussy. Just wait to get fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you want to have some ice cream with my friend of me? Get lost, greaseball. 
Come on, man, that's not gonna work. <laughs> that's his pickup line. You know how you pick up chicks in this country? Very disgusting. <laughs> Ooh, look at that fucking thing. That look like a pizza. I'm with Tony. Think you can do it with her? Try the tongue technique. You're not gonna do it. Watch this. Come on. Watch that guy. He's gonna stick his tongue out to that girl. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you see what happened to him? <laughs> what do you think was gonna happen? Lesbian. What I tried to do. <laughs> Lesbian. He must be kidding. That's a car. It looks like somebody's nightmare. Do you have a different car? So, you like this better? <laughs> Just going car shopping. Dragging me to the zoo to look at tigers. He says he's gonna buy one now. I know someone who had a tiger. <laughs> I like Frank. Only I like you better. Okay. Ooh. Getting high on the own supply. Okay. I don't fuck around with the help. That was such an aggressive move. Would you kiss me if I wear the hat? No. Playtime is over, okay? <laughs> She's smiling. Okay. This is gonna be way too toxic. Mama. Oh, she's alive. Whoa. Gina. Huh? You know the last time I saw you, you was like that. You look like a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tony. The big softy with his family. It's beautiful, Tony. Mom is not impressed. My kid sister don't have to work. And Mama, she don't have to sew in no factory. I want you to see what a good boy I be. She's not gonna want this money. Who did you kill for this, Antonio? Oh. I'm an organizer now, and I get a lot of political contributions. Sure you do. Ooh. Mom's a tough cookie. It's Cubans like you who are giving a bad name to our people. That's your son! Son! I wish I had one. Oh. He was a bomb then, and he's a bomb now. I don't want you around, Gina! I mean, it's probably for the best. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me how long you've been away. You're my blood. That's nice. It's like an entirely different person around his family. Yeah. And obviously the mom has her reasons. You don't tell her I give it to you, but give us some from time to time. You gotta get some fun out of life. <laughs> She's beautiful. I'm going to stay away from her. Yeah. The change in music. <laughs> yeah. Hands off. Somebody who can guarantee to buy from me 150 kilos a month. So much coke. You got good stuff here. Class A chip. <laughs> oh, Dang. Wow. What a life. We'll be cutting out the Colombians. That means we have to go to war with them. Panama I can sell for 13.5 a key. What are you, nuts? We're losing one out of every nine loaves. Dang. It's not duck walk anymore. Forget about 35. Excuse me. That was a very suspicious phone. <laughs> oh. Negotiating for Frank Lopez? Oh, Frank's not here. You need to open your eyes and keep your mouth shut. What the hell happened? What's this guy doing? Shut the fuck Frank up. Frank is gonna love it, Michael. That's up to oh. Frank, not you! This is not a good look. No, can't be arguing with each other. Associates here can escort you to my chopper. Good. Hasta mañana. I don't like any of that. No. Why don't you leave your friend here? Getting rid of him. Yeah, they're cutting out Frank, maybe. I like you, Tony. There is no lying in you. Unfortunately, I do not feel the same about the rest of your organization. Just gonna see that copter go down or something? You just toss him out of the helicopter? He was an informer for the police. Informer? Ah! Oh, holy crap! Man, good thing he was arguing with him at the table. <laughs> All I have in this world is my balls and my word. How can I trust this organization? Frank is fine. You can blame him for that animal. Why don't I go back and talk to Frank? Don't you ever try to fuck me. I like that Tony was still loyal to Frank. Yeah, if he would have thrown Frank under the bus, it would have just looked terrible. Are you crazy? Oh, you Frank. Take it easy. Hang on my ass! I have 10-5 a key. 10-5. I met in the middle. There's gonna be a war in the street. Relax. Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> the fucking Diaz brothers. Fuck them all. I buried those cockroaches. Yeah, you're gonna have to go to war with everyone just to move all the product. We gotta expand. New York, Chicago, LA. This is a big step up. Yeah, I don't know if they're ready for this. 
Maybe you and Sosa know something I don't know. Not going well. The guys who last in this business are the guys who fly straight. You finished? <laughs> oh. Mm. He's gonna have to take him out. He can't go back to Sosa and be like, sorry, couldn't get the deal done. You just missed Frank. Too bad. It's not here for Frank. <laughs> well, I didn't come to see Frank. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. I heard you and Frank aren't working together anymore. Whoa. They stopped doing business together? This to the land of opportunity. Land of opportunity. With the right woman, they no stop on me. I like you. I say, she's a tiger. <laughs> I want you to marry me. Whoa, that's a huge step. What about Frank, though? Frank is not gonna last, okay? She didn't say no. <laughs> she's just like, um... I go now. Take care. What a proposal. Super high stakes. <laughs> oh. You did tell her to go have fun. Okay. Oh, a little jumpy. Chief Detective, not got it. The word on the street, Tony, is you're bringing in a lot of gays. Damn, they just already know everything? Well, we shake down who you want shaking down. Oh, shit. What? I got eight killers with badges working for me. Eight killers with badges? Milk. <laughs> so throwing a couple round trip tickets. <laughs> what? You want tickets to London too? You put that prick bus in. Oh. Uh-oh. Tony. Oh no, he's dead. <laughs> that was too far. Come on, man, really? What is about to happen in here? He's about to get destroyed. Oh, you're on drugs, too? Oh. That was so bad. I thought he was going to kill the guy, not hit his sister. He's not in a good place. No, I feel like it's like the, the godfather. The higher you move up, the worse your life gets. The more alone you become. It has to be Ricky Ricardo. Man, this guy's crushing it. But these two aren't laughing. Oh! Do you notice that, Tony? He doesn't want you out there mixing with those people, growing up to be like him. I like, like Fernando. He's a fun guy and he's nice. Took you to a toilet. And he knows how to treat a woman. <laughs> really? By taking her to the toilet to make out. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> They're like, wait a second, I want to watch this. The mirrors are so cool. Yeah. Or, or, or a doctor. What about a you? lawyer. No. Tony and I are like brothers, all right? And you're his kid's sister. That makes you siblings. <laughs> Tony, get out of the light. Oh. These dudes suck at shooting. Oh. Check out their knees. Damn, Tony. I mean, he was in the military. I'm glad his sister got out of there. Seriously. He did get hit, though, it seems. He made fun of Lopez Morris. What are you talking about, man? What happened? Nothing with girlfriends. They're going to strike back? So call him at his office at 3 o'clock, job. You tell him, we fucked up. He got away. You're kidding. What was the score? So Frank sent them? I think so. Now well, guess what? My little team, the little Lopezers. They just got straight in. That's great. Congratulations. <laughs> and there's the dirty cop. I bet it was the Diaz brothers. Well, they returned the favor for you. Spades. That guy is myself. You're done, Frank. When I said Frank. But it's just his guy calling, right? To leave a message? He looks pretty nervous. Hello. It's all right. We'll be home in an hour. Don't worry. Oh. Hey, Frank. You a piece of shit. So he just lied about the phone. I stay loyal to you. A man ain't got his word. It's a cockroach. It's your tree, Frank. You're sitting in it. He's not helping you now. I was the one. 
They should give me a second chance, not Tony. So what? You just try to have him killed. Please, Tony. Elvira, you want Elvira? You're gonna have her. You'll never see me again, Tony. You're definitely disappearing. I won't kill you. Oh, Christ, thank you. No, no. Shoot that piece of chip. He didn't kill him. He wasn't lying. <laughs> yeah, you can't miss when you're dealing with Tony. No, you can't miss at all in this business. Don't go too far, Tony. I not, man. <gasps> oh, oh, fuck. Right in the gut. One of them first class tickets to the oh. resurrection. Have a good breath. Fuck you! <laughs> and he's killed in Frank's building? Yeah. You want a job, Ernie? <laughs> sure, Tony. Okay, then you call me tomorrow. You got a job. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I don't know what job you'd give him. He's not very good at protecting people. Where's Frank? Oye, te. Como? Que yo estoy. That's all he had to do to win her over? Well, she doesn't really have a choice right <laughs> now. Interesting timing for that. Right? Woo. Dang. Business is going great. How do you clean that much money? Ooh, Ooh. there you go. Start your own company. The world is yours. Travel company? Beauty salons. He's like, holy crap. So much money. Hey, they're getting married. Are you guys next? We've literally only seen Elvira smile like twice in this <laughs> whole movie. Oh, he got a tiger. Oh, you gotta take it off the chain. Okay. Man, that's a lot of substances going on there. The more cash you give me, the harder it is for me to rinse. Who else can you trust? That's why you pay us what you do, you trust us. And the bank's shaking him down now? You gotta listen to him, you learn something. <laughs> How's married life treating you? Better than you are. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, the princess for me, Wade. She's beautiful. He's a kid? I just assumed he was talking about his wife. No. <laughs> that prick. Oh, you just already have it set up in lines? It had two things, too. <laughs> that was a fancy way. He charges 4% at the most, and he's connected. No puzzle. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth the money to start dealing with other shady yeah. people. Just try to keep everything as legitimate as possible now that you've made it so big. Since when does it take three days to wake a cable? What, you been watching it for three days? Someone should. I'll check it out, okay? Blow that fucking truck back to Colombia! Spending a lot of money on this counter surveillance. Twelve percent of our adjusted gross. It makes me sleep good at night. That's what counts. I agree with Tony. <laughs> We're getting sloppy. I mean, the higher you get, the more difficult it has to be to oversee everything mm -hmm. safely. You need way more people that you actually trust. Somebody should do something about this. What a bathtub! <laughs> it's huge. You know what capitalism is? Get fucked. <laughs> get your hair fixed and powder your nose. You do too much of that shit, you know? 100 billion dollar a year business. Damn, 100 billion? Legalizing and taxing them. I am not one of those voices. <laughs> <laughs> Money, that's all I ever hear in this house. Money, look at this. Pelican fly. <laughs> oh, here he is. Frank, you talked about money. Whoa, bringing Frank into it? Did she ever like Tony at any moment in this movie? Why don't you get a job or something, you know? Work with blankets. Lepers, that kind of thing. Anything beats lying around all day waiting for me to fuck. Not it. that good. Frank was better, huh? I was only kidding! <laughs> Married life is not all it's cracked up to me. I got a date. Better not be with your sister. Stay out of it. What do you mean stay out of it? It's my deal. I set it up. She's right. You are an asshole, man. <laughs> Who do I trust? Me! Screaming all alone. I don't need him. I don't need her. That whole bathroom is carpet. <laughs> <laughs> A terrible design. 
Montana Realty Company. Montana Realty. Someone listening or watching? Is that a camera? Get him up. Get your hands up. Put your hands against the wall. What the hell? You see that eye there on the clock? Say hi, honey. Oh, that's pretty cute. You got nothing on me. I'm changing dollar bills. That's all. Yeah, that doesn't seem so bad. He's such a good lawyer that by tomorrow morning, you're going to be working in Alaska. <laughs> oh, man. You give me a check for 100 grand. Five million bond? Going to come back at us on a tax evasion. Taxes. It's always taxes. Five years, you'll be out in three. Undeclared dollar staring into a videotape camera? It's hard to convince a jury you found it in a taxi cab. Damn. I don't think money buys you out of this situation. For as paranoid as he is, I can't believe he was working with cops, like, without knowing it. Right. Or for how high up he is. He was there. He was there counting money instead well, of having some That, else. I feel like, goes in with the paranoia. <laughs> this is Tony Montana. How do you do, Mr. Montana? Washington, huh? A lot of big people in this room. I think together we can solve all our problems. We have some friends in Washington that assure us these troubles can be taken care of. Ooh. You may have to pay some back taxes, a, a big fine. There will be no prison. So let's show parallel, Alex. <laughs> this man here, Alejandro Sosa, a very oh. interesting character. He's got them all. He's scheduled for 60 minutes next. You gonna take him out? They need to. Tony's gotta kill him. People everywhere are starting to listen to him. That is our problem. You remember Alberto, don't you? How could I forget him? <laughs> Alberto is an expert in the disposal business. He needs a little help. He's got to help carry out an assassination to stay out of prison. He looks awful. He just gets lower and lower every time we see him. Is this it? This is what it's all about, man. Eating, drinking, fucking. He's gonna cause a scene. You're looking like these rich fucking mummies. Jeez. He got to the top and he hates the view. I got a fucking junkie for a wife. I can't even have a kid with her, man. Her womb is so polluted. It's not a dinner table conversation. How dare you talk to me like that? What kind of a father do you think you are? Are you even gonna be alive by the time the kid goes to school? We're losers. We're not winners. Damn. I'm leaving. Oh. Man, this fell fast. Another quite loot, you're gonna love me again. I mean, she wasn't much different before you were married. I don't know what he was expecting. You need people like me. It's a mess. Yeah. You're not good. You just know how to hide. I always tell the truth. The last time you're gonna see a bad guy like this again. What an audience to tell that to. Like, none of those people care about him. <laughs> is this where 60 Minutes is filmed? Oh, maybe. I was wondering why he was coming to New York. Kind of forgot about the whole assassination thing. <laughs> it's a lot going on. Oh, this is him. Oh, he's just going to mess with his car? I wonder if it's going to be a bomb or like cut the brakes or something. I would say brakes. They probably need to make it look like an accident, right? Never mind. <laughs> it accidentally exploded. He's <laughs> coming. I don't give a fuck. Oh, do you think they have to detonate it? Probably. They're waiting for him to get back in the car to blow it. Oh, they want to send a message? Just do it now. I would not trust him driving. Just blow it up now. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, no. He's going with his family. You told me she took the kids in the other car. She did, boss. Oh, you can't do this now. No fucking way. That's it. Matamos a tipo solo. Ahora lo hacemos solo. You can't blow up a whole family. It would honestly better to just ram into the car, get out, shoot him in the head, and drive off. They're way too close. Two little kids in a car. Can't do it, Tony. Oh, there's the UN. You think I killed two kids and a woman? Fuck that! He's not gonna do it. Don't do it! You die, motherfucker! Ooh! What, you stupid fuck? Look at you now! Damn. That's gonna cause a few problems. But I'm glad he didn't kill two kids and a wife. He's been gone the last couple of days. He just took off. He just left? 
Your mama called. Gina's gone. Did he run off with Gina? Uh, what about Elvis? She called? No. Tell her I love her, okay? Everyone's gone. Come on, come on, come on. Go ahead, get her, get her. Let's go, come on. I'll be over, yeah. Yeah, okay. Move me, move me. Oh my god. So much coke. What are you... That's an insane amount. We had a little problem. I heard. A friend gave a speech today at the UN. He was not supposed to give... I mean, he was supposed to be dead. They found what was under the car, Tony. Heat is gonna come down hard on my partners and me. You wanna fuck? Oh, oh, shit. Do you wanna go to war? We'll take you to war. Why do you have to act? Everything you touch. Tony actually didn't do much to her. If anything, he tried to keep her out of it. Tony, I can't find money anywhere, man. I can't find fuck. it. Oh, man, if he finds him at his sister's and he's done so much coke. This is gonna be so bad. Dude, stop! Yeah, oh my god. This is a nice place. It can't be Manny, right? He would know where he lives. I would assume so, unless he had another house. Oh! This is how you're gonna reveal to Tony? No! Who's your best friend? We got married just yesterday. Yeah, he has a wedding ring on. Are you kidding me? Tony, dude. I mean, I get being angry, but killing him? And they got married. Who are they? That was like half a dozen people just jumping over the wall. Oh my. They assembled that many people that quickly? Tony has like three bodyguards here, and he's not even watching the cameras. We're gonna war. That's what we're gonna do. The war's already outside. We're gonna eat that salsa for breakfast. <laughs> Holy crap. There's those two. It always ends with nothing and no one. Where the hell are all these people? This was supposed to be 12% of their budget was this security system and like two dozen guys have already ran in fuck oh fuck man oh fuck it they were all looking at the house and not the other direction jeez they're right behind you how has he not like OD'd? I, I mean, don't... I don't. Is he hallucinating? I hope so. I hope she's not in this room. Didn't they give her a bunch of pills and put her somewhere? Is this what you want, Tony? What the? F you can't stand for another man to be touching me. What do you want me, Tony? Huh? Your sister? Okay, so this is real? He's not just hallucinating? Where'd she get a gun from? Oh! oh fuck me! Oh my... He just saw his sister get butchered in front of him? Tony! They're all over the place! Get, get out of here! A little late for that. Right? Yeah. Gina has like 50 bullet holes in her. Jeez. Tony, open up! Open the fucking door! Tony, she's been dead for a while and your men are getting slaughtered outside. He's so high. Wanna play a game? Okay. Have a night with you. Come on. Oh my god. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend! <laughs> oh. Okay, that took out a handful. Hey. You're gonna need some more grenades. Oh, damn. He's taking a, a lot of them out, actually. Jeez. There's just so many of them. Oh.
There's still more people running in. No. Take you out the fucking house. You fuck with me. You fuck with the back. I think you fucking with it. He was just so high. Screaming for them to keep shooting him. Him and his men just got destroyed. The only one who made it out was his wife. And she's probably not doing very well either. His mom? Yeah. Man, what an ending. All right, that was Scarface. What'd you think? That was dark. I don't know how many movies we've seen where the main character is just kind of a shitty person from start to finish. But Tony was kind of a shitty dude the entire time. Yeah, I mean, honestly, in the beginning, I was rooting for him. Like, he came here, and I know that he was completely a criminal and all of those <laughs> things, but, like, he was just trying to make a life for himself. And as soon as he hit, like, any type of success, it went right to his head. I mean, every single situation, he just assumed that he would come out of it on top, I feel like. Yeah, and he was such a hothead that nobody ever had like control over any situation with him, Yeah, including him. I mean, everyone wanted to work with him and wanted to use him because he was such a loose cannon. Yeah, they wanted to just point him in the direction of chaos and be like, okay, Tony, go fuck up stuff over there. And then he would go do it. Yeah, but I don't even know. Like it just, every little piece of his life just completely imploded at the end. There was definitely positives. I mean, like you said, he did come over here trying to make things better, obviously through the route of criminal activity. But when you're dealing with everyone as a criminal, there's always gonna be someone who's shittier going through things. He actually did have some code that he lived by. He did seem very honest, almost to a fault. So there was situations where you could look at it as him just being like a hothead or not giving a fuck or anything but he's really just not playing anyone else's game. He's just saying the truth and seeing what happens while everyone else is kind of scheming and lying and stuff. They're playing the game. Tony just comes in and is like, yeah, I want this. Are you gonna give it to me or not? No, okay, fuck you. Very interesting character. I've never seen a criminal like Tony Montana. Yeah, no, I mean, he was something else. He knew what he wanted. Yeah. He knew who he wanted to work for and who he was willing to work for. And then he got to a point where he kind of got that push from Sosa that he didn't want to work for anyone. That's true. You also brought it up in the reaction itself that he didn't immediately throw Frank under the bus. He actually never threw Frank under the bus. No, it very much seemed like, you know, Sosa didn't want to work with Frank and this was his opportunity to do something on his own, but he was never going to throw Frank under the bus. He, I mean, he even tried to convince Frank to go along with mm -hmm. the plan. So again, it's like he was very honest and truthful throughout these negotiations and this criminal activity. And he wasn't overtly greedy or anything. Like he said, he was making money on the side, but he never did anything to jeopardize Frank or his business or to undermine him in any way. It's just if there was other avenues that Frank wasn't capitalizing on and he didn't want to capitalize on, well, then Tony would do it. Whereas you have a lot of other stories where the extreme lust of power and money and stuff is the driving force behind people trying to move up and betray each other. Whereas it does feel like Tony a lot of times moved up in power because of how everything played out, not because he made some deal with the cops or mm -hmm. deal with Sosa to, you know, cut Frank out or something. It is weird. Tony was an asshole, but he had some honesty and he didn't throw people under the bus until he really started spiraling. Yeah. And the biggest person was his friend. I mean, he just killed his friend. That was really sad to see. It was obvious that Manny was just like so in love with his sister. You kind of knew that's where it was going. Obviously the fact that he hid it from Tony, both of them, Gina and Manny hid it from Tony. Like, I don't know if he would have ever been okay with it, but also to think about it, like I'm not a guy that has a sister, but if you want your sister to end up with anyone, wouldn't you want them to end up with, you know, someone that you trust and that you- I like, don't know. Rather than, you know, that guy from the club. 
Exactly. Or... I mean, if you have to, I think the goal was for her to be with someone like a dentist or something, like not yeah. someone who's in the criminal world. But if the, you had to pick, Manny was probably one of the nicest guys in the whole movie. Yeah. He was a great friend to Tony. Mm -hmm. He technically was the one with the connections that started all of this for Tony. He was always by Tony's side every step of the way. Whenever Tony would try to spiral or lose control a little bit, he was always there to try at least to rein him in. He was just the best person you could have or even ask for when you're going through this world where everyone's betraying each other. So yeah, at one point, he would probably be the ultimate guy to be with your sister because you would probably trust no one else more to treat her right. Yeah, so I mean, that was devastating. Obviously, Tony was just like so coked up that he didn't even realize what he had done until he was back at his place and Gina was already dead. Or maybe it was right before that. I think it was right before she walked in. Yeah, like he was just like, oh, how, Manny, like. How could I do that? Yeah, like. I don't know. Dude. I mean, it's crazy too because we see throughout the movie Elvira is like the druggy one. She's always taking coke or having coke, snorting coke, whatever the terminology is. So you would expect her to be the character to spiral as the movie goes forward. I think it was Goodfellas, maybe? The lady was the love interest. It was like a love triangle. And towards the end of the movie, she like just kept spiraling until I think she dies or something. Casino? casino. It was but Casino. I was very much thinking Casino a lot of the way through this. Yeah, so you expect her to have a similar arc of Casino, but she just is gone after that dinner. You never see her again. It's Tony who just is doing drugs constantly for like the last half an hour of the movie. Yeah, I honestly, I don't know what, like what is your threshold? Like how much coke do you have to do before you overdose? That's what I didn't I understand know. how or <laughs> your heart stops or something like something's gonna happen when you take that much coke. he wasn't was, even like measure he just was sticking his face in like piles a, of it a big pile of coke just whole face in there tony just spiraled so far out of control killing his friend even like he was having a conversation with his obviously dead sister as his men are getting butchered outside like his dude is banging on the door like Please, Tony, let me in. They're about to kill me. And he's just like, oh, don't worry, Gina. We're going to get out of here. What are you? He was just so gone to the point where he's getting lit up, just bullets everywhere. And he's just screaming like, you think you can kill me? I don't he know. had completely lost it really prior to even going to find Gina. Yeah. When you think about all of this stuff, like he put himself in such a dangerous situation just when he got to America and he was choosing that life of crime, I feel like he had to have felt some responsibility for Gina. Mm -hmm. He went to her house, he started giving her money, and then she's like coming out on the town and like all of those things. I mean, his mom even was like, she was not like this before you came back. Moms always know. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing was just really disappointing. I, I mean, I do have to say Al Pacino was fantastic. Oh yeah, no, I mean, the movie was excellent. Yeah. And it, it kept us entertained the entire time. It was stressful. There were so many moments of like, holy crap, really? But overall, super depressing. I mean, you come away with nothing positive. Your main character is dead in a fountain. Alone. Alone. No idea what happened to Elvira. The mom, both of her kids and her husband gone. So she's alone. It's nothing positive, which it's a movie about life of crime and stuff. I don't know if we've ever seen a crime movie. End well. <laughs> where people end well or like they finish on top or something. But no, it they was... always get to the top and they just like plummet. Yeah, that's always the theme. It's you get all the way to the top and it's just garbage and it's lonely up there. Yeah, I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer, we haven't seen on the channel, I don't think, um, but she was fantastic. She just like had this kind of like regalness about herself, but she was still just like constantly doing drugs. She wasn't in the movie as much as I thought she would be, but every time she was there, she obviously just captured the whole screen. Yeah. A presence about her. Every time she was in any room or anything, all of the attention and focus was on her. And she was just sitting there just snorting drugs the entire time, doing nothing. I mean, she did nothing in the movie, really. She just no. went from Frank to Tony. I don't feel like at any moment in the movie, 
there ever was a connection between the two of them, except for maybe in the car when he very aggressively came onto her and then they started smiling and stuff. Um, but she seemed like a lost soul before we ever met her. Yeah, and that's honestly was part of the reason that this kind of reminded me of Casino. I know that she probably did it more to hurt Tony, but she did bring up Frank a number of times. Yeah. And it's like, maybe she really did love Frank. It's hard to tell. She didn't really have like a whole ton of personality. Um, <laughs> she was just sitting there doing coke. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she was just kind of along for the ride, but maybe she really did love Frank and Tony just wanted her. It didn't really feel like it was like a totally mutual thing. I mean, we saw her smile twice in the car and then on her wedding day. So maybe she was happy. Man, maybe that day. For, for a little bit or something, or he got her Coke for a wedding present for something. As much as she captured the screen and everything, it felt one sided. I mean, it, it mm -hmm. literally started just because Tony saw her. Yeah. It's not like they ever had like any deep, meaningful conversation about anything. It was just like, I want you. Uh, let's get married. You want kids? Kids are okay? Okay, let, all right, good. We're done. Yeah. Let's move forward. Just skating through life, skating through her relationships. Somehow, maybe she's the only one who's still alive, but I wouldn't be shocked if the movie also cut to her overdose somewhere in some hotel room or something. Yeah, I mean, we had like those rules and number two was like, don't take your own drugs, essentially. Yeah. And they're all breaking those rules, like Tony and Elvira. I mean, this was a rough movie to follow this journey of someone starting from the bottom, like starting from nowhere, working all the way up to a very high power. But overall, like the film, it did such a good balance of like the violence and the dialogue because it was very dialogue heavy. Yeah. Um, and we did watch The Untouchables, which is also Brian De Palma. Can definitely see the similarities in style between the two of them, but it made for such like an engaging film. The overall style and direction of the movie added a lot to it. I mean, even in the very first exposure to heavy violence with the Colombians, yeah, Colombia. <laughs> Even though, come on, what are you guys doing over there chopping people up? But even that setup where you know that Manny is so into women and you have a girl walk past the car, you have the TV volume turning up and like both of them are tied up in the shower. It does such a good job at building that tension and that stress. And then it even takes the time to like slowly go over back to Manny as all of this is going on. And Manny's just sitting there talking to a girl and you're like, damn it, Manny, like we knew this was gonna happen. So it was great. I mean, even with the ending scene with everyone showing up, I mean, you see people running over the wall like 20 minutes before anything even happens. Mm -hmm. So you're going through all of these conversations, you're watching Tony just sit there in the chair, just be miserable and you're like, Dude, snap out of it because people are coming. So the movie was excellent at building that stress. And like the different uses of like combining shots, I guess. I forget what the name of the bar was, the bar restaurant that they went to a couple of times. Oh, right. You had the mirrors, which is what we were able to kind of see like multiple faces in a conversation. Yeah. The mirrors were used a ton on that set. Right. And then at the end, when you're just like watching Tony just like melt into his pile of coke, you have the cameras behind him. And it's like, you're seeing all these people. There's no sound, there's no focus on it, but you're just seeing them all just swarming his place. Yeah. So it was really cool that it, it didn't like put it in your face, but you're very much seeing both sides of everything and kind of what's coming. What they put on screen for you to watch was very well crafted. You know, I mean, going through this, there was really only a few brief moments of positivity or happiness. <laughs> um, I mean, there was only like a brief montage of them having success, of them like opening up all the businesses, like mm -hmm. the travel company, all of the salons and stuff, mm -hmm. going to the bank, getting the money cleaned. Other than that, everything else was just like, oh, this is rough for you, Tony, and for everyone else. I mean, even when he got arrested, it's like, why are you there, Tony? You have, you have men to do this for you. Why are you sitting there counting money? Even I think Manny was supposed to be there doing that. It's the paranoia. Like, I mean, he even said himself how paranoid he was. And that was definitely his downfall in that situation. 
which is still like mind boggling to me that like, how did you not know who you were counting all this money with or where you were that they could set up cameras and- Right, you just went to some random location you've never been to before or something. Yeah, it seemed like so out of character for him for how paranoid he was through most of the film. But I think you're onto something that he was just so paranoid that it almost brought him all the way back to the spot where you, you're fucked. So, he had to do it himself. Yeah. Crazy to think that his downfall, or at least the major start for his downfall, he was already on the way down, was not killing the women and children or the, the wife and kids. Yeah, I mean, that was his line, which obviously things went south because that was the first day on their travel tour that the wife and kids had gone with him. Right, it wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah, but that was the biggest problem. I mean, the downfall of Tony in not killing that guy um, who was essentially outing all of his partners and his partner's partners. Right. It was nice to see that he was not willing to kill that guy's wife and kids. But yeah, I mean, it cost him everything. So this was just a rough movie. I mean, I really enjoyed it. I always really enjoy these crime movies and the experience of someone starting from the bottom and working their way up. It's always so clever how they make deals or who turns on who. And Tony for sure is one of the most unique crime lords or drug lords that I've ever seen. Yes, yeah, no, Tony was something else. He was somehow so terrifying, so hot-headed, yet very calm, had his rules and extremely loyal, and then everything flipped and none of that was true. It's He was literally everything. It was a great time to experience. I really enjoyed the film. It was so different than a lot of stuff that we've seen and very dark, yeah. um, but overall an incredible film. Yeah, and thank you for Shaker and Spoon for sponsoring this video. Being able to sip on some tequila drinks throughout <laughs> was definitely fun. There was a few moments where people actually had some drinks <laughs> and cheers at the same time. So that was great. Yeah. It definitely added to the experience. And with such a rough movie, having a nice drink to sip on definitely kind of calmed everything down a little bit. So yeah. that was awesome. That was nice. And I'm looking forward to making the other drinks. In yeah, the absolutely. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links are also in the description. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.